Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. And this is another Patreon exclusive video. So this is um, this is video number three in a drone construction progression project that I'm working on. So if you haven't seen videos number one and two, I'm gonna put those in one of the info cards in the upper right corner. Um, you can hit that drop down and check those out. But so in, uh, in video number two, I had said that I wouldn't torture you with um, with building the ortho mosaic model uh, from the images that I got yesterday. So we're we're coming up on Thanksgiving here. So the November flight for this particular client job and building the orthos does take some time. I use MetaShape Pro. I do have a course on MetaShape Pro on Udemy. If you're in a hurry to check that out, you can. Uh, but I think I'm going to be building some more MetaShape Pro stuff into these videos for the Patreon channel. So let me know as a patron if you'd like to see that. Um, that particular tutorial series is several hours long over on, um, over on Udemy. But what I can do, what I wanted to show you, because I want to show you a cool thing. Uh, I kept mentioning over and over again that the Ortho Mosaic was a really big deal and useful to the clients. So I'm going to open up the ortho mo model that I generated uh, just yesterday. And boy, that's looking a little messy for the moment. And that's the chunk. So what had happened in the previous video I showed you, I had all of those images for the orthos. And those images can get fed in and processed in a uh, 2D and 3D model. So right now, let's look at the dense cloud really quick. And um, so when I took those images, I think there was maybe 85 images. Let's take a look at my screen, shall we? So ortho images, and I've got some extra stuff in here now because I've been building things. But let's just scroll down through these. So 85 images, you can see that 85 right here. So all of these still images were dropped into Metashape to make a model. Let's take a look at just one individual image. So there's one individual part of the whole ortho mosaic. Um, we can actually zoom in here and we can see, oh, there's my helipad and there I am right there with uh, my yellow jacket on because it was so darn cold. So those 85 images were fed into Metashape Pro and there's Metashape right there and I did some processing. So if you're not familiar with Metashape or Pix4D, um, these are computer applications that you put on your desktop, uh, PC or Mac, and um, you can take collected images and make two-dimensional and three-dimensional models out of them. The workflow is pretty straightforward. We add some photos in, we align the photos, we build a dense point cloud, we build a mesh to go over everything, we build a texture, um, we build a digital elevation model, and then we build the ortho mosaic. So we're not using this for taking measurements, so this ortho mosaic doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to show month over month the major changes that have occurred on the site. And I'm going to show you how I line that up for the web page that I build. So I build an actual web page each month for this particular client so they can see the changes month to month in their job site. And one of the things I like to do is create an ortho mosaic map that shows them last month and this month. So last month I ran a map just like this one. And then this month I just built this new one. Clicking on the ortho mosaic, whoop, cancel. And what I want to do is on the left hand side in the chunk, the chunk contains all of our stuff. We got our tie points, our dense cloud, our 3D model. So there we go, I'll show you the little 3D model. Look at that, not, not super pretty because I was not actually flying this to make a model. But there's what the 3D model looks like, kind of cool. You can definitely see what's going on in here. But what I was after for these clients was this here, the ortho mosaic model. And as I start zooming into this, you can see we've got some good levels of detail. We're looking at all the boxes and materials up on the rooftops. And right over here is my truck and there I am with that yellow jacket again and the helipad so pulling this model together you can definitely see what's happening on the ground we got some new parking areas over here um, we've got a vehicle on the road driving by the construction site so all in all 
um, you know, this gives people a good idea of what does the overall location look like today. What I can do is go up here and I can actually export an ortho mosaic so I can make a geotiff and you can overlay geotiffs on Google Earth, which is really cool. But in my situation, I just exported a TIFF file and because I don't need this to be perfect. No one is taking measurements off of it. And with that in mind, um, I can run these a little faster. They still take hours to create, believe me. Uh, but um, I can quickly get to this to create the, uh, to create the ortho. So I'm opening up my 1123 folder, which is from the shoot. And I'm opening up the ortho images from 1026. So I've got a couple things in here because I already did the layering. But I actually want to show this to you. So what I'm going to do, here is the TIFF that was created when I exported from Metashape. Um, the size of this file is 27.2 megabytes. It's big. And I'm just going to grab this ortho and I'm dragging it down to Photoshop. So to show the difference between last month and this month, um, we can create layers in Photoshop and put one TIFF on top of the other TIFF, line them up, and then we can export each of them as small little JPEGs that can go onto a website. And I've got a cool little before and after program. So here we are in Photoshop, and we grabbed the 1123 ortho. And so we can zoom in here and take a look at the images as well. And that's pretty nice and um, you know it just shows people where it is today so now we've got that let's move this whoop command I accidentally move that off of the screen and so over on the right hand side I'm going to change this from layer 1 to 11 23 because I just wanted to give myself the date of that one and now I'm gonna go over to that 1026 and let's find there we go 27.3 megabytes, pretty familiar. Let's drag that on down to Photoshop again. And now I have two tabs. I've got the 1123 and I've got the 1026 and I moved that first one around, but you can see, ooh, these guys kind of match up pretty well. Let's look at the 1123 and let's zoom in real quick. And one thing that popped out to me is here's some new parking. How do I know it's new parking? Let's go to the other one, zoom that on in go over here look there's no concrete layout in here so we've got this new parking area versus the old area extremely cool so i'm just moving over here with that 1026 and i'm going to zoom this back out so this one fits into the window there we go that's fitting into the window nicely and on the 1026 one i'm actually going to pull this off to my other monitor and i've got the 1026 one selected and it has a layer here. I'm going to drag that layer onto the 1123. Now I'm going to close that other one. So now we have two layers and they match up pretty nice. Let's uh, label this one over here 1026. There we go. And really what I want is to move these. I'm going to put 1123 above 1026. So now we're looking at both in layers and you can see not quite perfectly matched up. I'm moving things, so let's, let's take a look at that from there. That's looking okay, but you know, let's get this squared away. I'm gonna grab the other layer and move it over as well. And I'm just manually aligning these. Once again, as I said before to you, um, this is not being used for measurement, so it doesn't have to be Perfect. I like to get it really close though so that everything lines up. So now we've got the two layers over here, 1123 and 1026, and I can turn them off and on with this little eye symbol. So very similar, very close, not exact, but close enough, some would say. Uh, one thing that I can do in here is select that 1123 layer, lower the opacity a little bit so that I can see where it is and is not lining up with the other one. And so I could move, there we go. That lined up pretty nice on the right hand side now. If I turn the opacity back up to 
pretty darn close, pretty darn accurate. What's, uh, what's problematic though, because I know that this one isn't perfect, is when I scroll over to the left-hand side, let's drop that opacity again, and this is where we can see, yeah, there's some difference. Look at those uh, turn arrows there. See those turning arrows? Wow, talk about not perfectly lined up. So what can I do about that, that things aren't lining up so good? I'm gonna zoom out here, and I'm gonna hit Command-T for free transform. And I can actually click and drag. See how I'm transforming this? Lining those arrows closer, and almost there, but not quite perfection yet, right? So I'm going to line the, oh, there I go. Those arrows are lined up nice. I'm turning that back up to 100%. And let's zoom down into here and take a look. Yep, pretty spot on. Now, did this damage other things in the model? No, it doesn't look like it did. So I've got a fairly nicely lined up pair of layers. We've got October and we've got November. October and November. Let's scroll over here one more time and let's take a zoom in and let's just see some of those changes in the property. So you see this really cool, um, I guess this is gonna be a parking area, very interesting layout. If I turn the 1123 layer off, ah, nothing's there. So there is, they, a month ago, they had not finished out that roughed out parking area, now they have. If I scroll over here a little more, this is the 1123 layer. We see a cool little uh, Caterpillar tractor here. Um, so if I turn that layer off, oh look, so back in October, uh, we didn't have some of that concrete area and that particular uh, Caterpillar was over here. So now I turn this back on and we can see the major changes. You'll also see changes in shadow around here as well because the, the light is changing every week here because we're going through the seasons, right? So it's getting light later in the day right now. And when I started this up months ago, um, you know, it was light way early in the morning. So, so we're running into different shadows and issues and we can even go look at the swimming pools over here uh, at an adjacent property and let me go ahead to 1123 and turn that off again and you can see that we've got some little bit of differences here and maybe that free transform broke things over on this side just a little bit and sure enough it's slightly off but it's not painfully off so normally what I'll do is I will tinker with this until they are spot on together and once I've got the alignment where I want it, I go up and I grab my crop tool. And um, I'm not going to set any specific uh, aspect ratio, but I can go in with the crop tool and make a nice little blocked out area so that we're only looking at the property and showing the changes over time. So I just did that crop. And now I have two layers. So I've got last month and I've got this month. I can save each layer as a JPEG, take those layers and pop them into um, the web presentation that I'm doing for the clients. So now I've got this two layer setup and I can just feed them into my website and I've got a special plugin for my WordPress website that allows me to layer photos on each other and show before and after. So I just wanted to show you this and explain why it was important to me to get the um, to get the ortho mosaic done. Now, uh, the ortho mosaic is not the biggest part of the presentation for my clients, but it is a really rapid way to show change. You know, click that slider back and forth, and boom, you can see the change that's occurred. So it's a nice, fast reference material. Now, building the videos for the progression report and doing the still photos and time-lapsing them, um, those actually take less time than building this ortho mosaic. So why go to all that trouble? Well, I'm going to all that trouble, as I said, because it is one of the most rapid fire ways to show change over time. Um, just showing you that parking area uh, versus last month of no parking area 
is, is huge. So we know some major changes that have occurred. The video and the still photos help show different angles and sides of the buildings. And um, you can really see the difference between each month's still photos and each month's videos. But if someone's just in a real hurry and they just want to know, did these guys get something done on the site? If they jump down to that ortho mosaic, um, they'll find out very quickly, yeah, yeah, things have definitely happened on the job site. Um, and if that's the only question they have, you know, they get that 30 second or one minute answer. They can feel good and confident that the construction is still on target and um, they can get on with their day and worry about other projects. So once again, uh, this particular video is Patreon only. So I hope that you found this useful. Please let me know um, if you'd be interested in seeing uh, the development of some coursework here for making the orthos and other things with Metashape and also setting up Litchi. But as, I, as I've noted before, and since this is a very new uh, Patreon channel, you're probably familiar with uh, the fact that I do have the courses over on Udemy as well. I'm not trying to double dip, so um, I will be making new and unique content here, but if you feel that, uh, if you feel that you'd like to see a little more about building these orthos, um, creating the flight paths with Litchi, because those are both things that I've got Udemy courses on, but if you'd like to see some of that get built into the Patreon site, we can do that over time. I'm going to be taking you through these different jobs, um, this one and the ranch project as well. And when I'm taking you through these, I'm going to talk to you about some of these, um, some of these software applications like Metashape um, and uh, you know, using Photoshop and Kino and all the rest of these things. So that's going to be built over time, and some of that is already on the site. So I hope that this was useful and informative and gives you an idea, hey, how do I show progression over time with uh, some ortho mosaics? Well, this is the way you can do it. The other thing is, these are very large files, so you could offer to the clients to do some pretty giant prints. I'm going to quit Photoshop. I'm not going to save this because yesterday I actually messed around with one and got it perfected to where I want it. And right there, let me click this, but right here. Um, in my 1123 folder, I have 1123 ortho TF layers because I had both those layered. So that's good to go. I'll be exporting them uh, as JPEGs. And when I'm assembling things on the, uh, on the uh, web page for the client, um, you'll see those things get added into the web page as well. So coming up next in the fourth part of this series, we will talk about video progression and putting the videos together and getting them ready to upload to YouTube and then putting them on YouTube as an unlisted uh, connection. But even though it's unlisted, I can put it onto my website if I leave the embed code turned on. So that's what we'll be talking about in the next video and probably expect that within the next week. All right, everyone, thanks for hanging out for a bit. Thanks for being a member of the, of the new Patreon setup. It's super appreciated. And like I said, I hope that um, I hope this is helping you in your planning and thoughts for your drone business. And be sure to drop comments and questions because I'll be happy to answer them. All right, we'll see you in the next video.